All right, guys, I, I got my, my weightlifting belt on so that we can talk about this new to me Phil Harvey war crime knife. It is, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, th that's all I can say. Like, I, I don't even know where to start. Um, <laughs> as you know, I like some big, ridiculous knives, okay? I've got some other ones from Phil Harvey. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separate video with just my three Phil Harvey knives um, to really compare and just kind of talk about the Phil Harvey knives a little bit more. Um, but I will put a link down below to my Phil Harvey playlist so that you can go check out the Peacemaker video and the Gladius video. And now I can add to my Phil Harvey collection the war crime. I got this used uh, on the secondary from a buddy Flint uh, who hooked me up and I absolutely love it. I've been looking for one for a while. I've been talking to Phil about maybe making me one. We just, we never really, we never went forward with making one. And when I saw them on Arizona Custom Knives for sale or a couple on the, on the you know, Facebook groups and stuff, it wasn't the right time maybe to grab one. So when, when Flint had this one, I reached out right away. A couple of other people had already posted on Facebook. Hey, I sent you a message, sent you a message. And so I sent him a message and said, Hey, I, I know you probably already got some people interested and whatnot, but let me know if it's still available. <laughs> uh, and he wrote back and said, yeah, I had a couple of guys kicking the tires, but um, if you're interested, let me know. So we chatted up for a day and the next morning, um, I sent him money and he shipped it out the next day. Like that day that I sent the money, he shipped it that day. So enough about that. Let's just go through the specs like I normally do. And then I do have some other knives here for some comparisons and whatnot. Six and three quarters closed. It does flip as you've seen. No wrist, no wrist there. And it was at a little bit of a downward angle. Okay, it's not going to flip if I hold it straight up. I, I'm not going to lie. Okay, it will flip if I do it this way. I think it does sometimes. Let's see. Nope. A little bit of wrist and it'll flip over. Okay, it's a massive blade. 11 and a quarter overall. The blade from the edge of the scale to the tip is 4.88 with a 4.42 cutting edge. The blade steel, I believe, is D2. That's a lot of what Phil uses. <laughs> the blade thickness? It's, it's an odd shape, right? It's very wide in the middle. Okay, this was designed for stabbing motion. And it really, you know, spreads out. If you were to pierce something, it really does spread out and make a big wound channel. So it is 0.695 here at the thickest. Uh, it weighs in at one pound and four ounces. Overall thickness is 0.932 minus the clip. And because of this, just the sheer size, I'm going to include the clip measurement of 1.26. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. So let's just zoom in. I mean, it's the attention to detail and the craftsmanship is awesome. The pocket clip is huge also. Huge backspacer, which looks amazingly uncomfortable, but it's not. And I'll grab the knife here in just a minute and show you how you really fit into it. Um, really nice hand rub satin finish. Now, and when I did post, I don't know if it was from the unboxing that Phil saw or one of the pictures on Instagram, he noticed this scratch right here. So I am going to send this back to him. It looks as though it was closed with no detent ball at one point because the lock bar insert 
kind of lines up with it right there. So I am going to send this back to Phil, who is in the UK. So it's always kind of dicey and it's, you know, it's always some drama when I ship stuff to him. But I have had to ship stuff to him before. The Peacemaker, I had to ship back also. So when you grab this knife, I am not touching the backspacer at all. Like it's, it's not a thing because of where your hand is. So, yeah. Again, is this a practical knife? No. Am I going to actually carry it? No. Am I going to take it to a barbecue and show my friends? Sure. Is it going to fit in any of my Pelican cases? No. I, so I don't know how I'm going to transport it yet, but I am thinking of getting a null pack made specifically for my three Phil Harveys. Because I think that'd be cool. But just very cool detail. And on the inside here, uh, it has his, you know, Phil Harvey blades. I will put a link to his um, Instagram, his YouTube channel, and all that stuff down below. As well as a Phil Harvey playlist of mine. And all in all, it's just a cool knife that really does round out my Phil Harvey collection. Okay. Because of the massive clip, I'm going to put it this way for some size comparisons of some other knives that are big, that people th see and think are big. The Demko AD20 Altai. Um, yeah, it m makes it look like an AD20.5. This is a Demko AD20. Okay. What about a... Todd Big Bodega, which is also a big full-size knife. Yeah, it's kind of dwarfed. I mean, I could almost put two bodegas. What about a Medford Praetorian T-Tie? It's kind of a hybrid. These were a special run for me and some buddies. Um, but yeah, it's a full-size Praetorian. Um, yeah, I like, and if we go to normal comparisons here, here it is next to the Sharpie, the double A battery and the D cell battery. And we're still not even close to the same length. It is ridiculous, but I like big knives and I cannot lie. I mean, the, the, there's just no way around it. Spyderco Delica. I think that this is something that, you know, the Hellraiser P-Series, this is a knife that not everybody's going to want to own, but I think everybody wants to check out or would, you know, enjoy handling for a few minutes. The Shark Nivco Ryu, which is also a big knife. Um, it, it's just one of those things. It's an art knife. You know, I don't know if they classify it really as an art knife, but it's an art knife. It's not going to get carried. It's not really going to get used, although it's rather dull. So people that owned it before me did something with it. I, you know, so uh, yeah. So I am, I am going to have Phil fix the mark there. He will sharpen it up. It is a booger to sharpen. Uh, it is a hollow grind. I don't know if I can show that very well if that focuses so you can see i mean that takes some work well it's going to take some work to try to get it even into focus but to make all those angles actually work well and fit together that's some craftsmanship you know and if you watch some of phil's videos of his shop he lives on a big farm in the UK and there's like a barn in the back, which is his shop. And he uses older styles tools, a lot of hand done things. He makes tools that he needs for making knives. I mean, it's really interesting. Some of his YouTube videos of him making a tool to make a knife 
or making a tool to fix some piece of equipment on his farm. It's crazy, the ingenuity and the detail work and the things that he can produce out of that environment, right? I mean, it looks like this comes from a high-end, you know, shop with, you know, million-dollar CNCs. No, not even close. So I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the war crime before I ship it back to Phil. Uh, so if you've got questions, let me know down below, please. Uh, and like I said, I'll do a follow-up video here in just a day or two with all three, my war crime, my Gladius, and my Peacemaker, just so you can see them all together. And fortunately for me, the coloring and all that really kind of matches throughout. So it's kind of a, a, a very good trio of knives that were kind of looked like they were made to be together. So, but that'll be a separate video. I didn't want to go forever and, and make this one too long and drawn out. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.